what about emotional management? Like how much could that have helped me in so many situations in my life? So many. The moment we think we can control our emotions is the moment it flips the script and it controls us. I'm sure everyone can relate to this where so many times like, oh man, you know, I just could have handled that better. If you're going to manage your emotions, part of it is understanding the energy behind the words. Every human deals with emotions every single day. Why it's not a part of our curriculum for growing up is literally mind-blowing to me. Our emotions are input. They inform us. They are not there to own us. They are not there to control us. You know, in our last podcast, we touched a little bit on not being controlled by our emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's really important when life starts throwing these twists and these turns at us that we have the emotional agility to be able to navigate through them, to not be controlled by our emotions, to, but to be able to direct them and understand how to move through them, move with them, and really in a way know that we have some direction over when they come up, how we'll express them, right? Mm -hmm. And we do have some tips and some tools for how to do that because we found ourselves in this more often than not. So sharing that is always part of what we like to do. So do you want to dive in and share, maybe just talk about how emotions have ever gotten away from you and what do you do in those times? Let's take it to real life, right? Well, of course, I've never had an emotional blow up. I mean, never. obviously, my sweet <laughs> I am little perfect, Austin. And, and, and I have never, ever had an issue. Um, yeah, no, that's not the case. Um, there are so many times <laughs> that I wish I could take back. <laughs> and we treat bomb now. <laughs> Here's the real. The reality is, and I'm sure everyone can relate to this. Where so many times, like, oh man, you know, I just could have handled that better. You know, <laughs> like really, hindsight's always just, twenty twenty, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, whether it was being, uh, you know, too mad or too frustrated or too sad or too embarrassed. Uh, but what know, is too, too right? whatever? Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a beautiful question. And I know that's a relative term, yeah. right? Um, I think part of it happens to, to coincide with a, a society that has not helped us understand our emotions. And so we have these perceived um, ideas on how they should look based on movies and most of the time. Or um, on, on, as we grow up, you know, whether it's parents or teachers or camp counselors or whatever it is, and telling you you should do this or no or don't do that or, you know, you're too sensitive or, you know, you're, you know, you're running everywhere, it's too crazy, like, you know, settle down, you know, all, all these things, like, don't get too excited and, or, you know, it's like, well, then what, what, what do you want me to, like, you know, don't talk, you should just be seen. You know, there's, there's a lot of these different things that are out there. And for me, it just, it really helped me realize through this process of my own personal growth, if, how much our society has really undervalued emotional management. Yes. Now that I can definitely get on board with. One of the things when it comes to emotions for me is there's such parts of my information, right? Yeah. They connect to my imagination. Mm. They inform me of what's going on in my life. And so when I start to suppress them to make others happy, then I'm actually limiting my own potential. Mm. And I don't want to do that. But I also am not here to become the great disruptor so that everyone else can conform to what's going to make my life better. Right. So what is that balance, right? How do we not suppress our own emotions 
therefore putting ourselves into this box where we've limited our imagination. We've limited the input that helps us know what we, in our last podcast, we were talking about knowing our own self-truth so that we become unshakable, right? Well, emotions help us with that. How do we not limit that? But we can then become a director of our emotions so that we know time and place and things that are important to become part of a society or a community, just the human collective as a whole, but still be the most authentic representation of what's going on within ourselves. Right? Absolutely. And I think it's important, as you said, we don't learn this. Nobody teaches us this, partly because I don't know that anybody else was taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's something that we, every human deals with emotions every single day. Why it's not a part of our curriculum for growing up is mind, literally mind-blowing to me. I, I, I can't comprehend it. The more that I think about it, the more I get frustrated. And I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to, <laughs> I need to manage that emotion. <laughs> so need to direct cycle. that somehow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, it's like I, I, I look back and I'm like, why, why was that? Why was there such an emphasis on the Pythagorean theorem, which I never use in my life? And, and why... What about emotional management? Like, how much could that have helped me in so many situations in my life? So many, and this goes for everyone. I mean, a lot of a lot of miscommunication, a lot of confrontation, a lot of conflict is happening because of a mismanagement of emotions. Yes, it's, and it stems from internally. We don't know how to manage our emotion, our, our own, like internally, let alone other people's. But we haven't even figured out how to manage our own. And so when there's disharmony within, there's going to be disharmony around us. Yeah. And then we perpetuate and then we build on that and it snowballs and it becomes an avalanche of emotion. Avalanche. <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's true. Like if you are unloading your emotions on me, and I have no idea how to manage my own emotional response to that, then all of a sudden, it's not just the avalanche coming from you, I'm compounding that. Mm -hmm. And that's how these big blow-ups tend to happen. And when we start to do that on a large scale, then that's how we get into all of these m huge escalations whether that's global escalations or community escalations, we could begin to navigate that a bit differently if even one of us on one of those sides learned how to manage the emotional response that comes from it. Yeah. And so let's dive into just some practical things that we've learned to help us manage and navigate our own. And we say direct because... The moment we think we can control our emotions is the moment it flips the script and it controls us, mm -hmm. right? Right, and the word control, like we really feel that there's and there's energy to words. And oftentimes, I mean, how often are we using the word control in a positive situation? And yeah. Truly. But when we say direct or direction, it tends to be a lot more positive situations in that regard, right? Yeah, 100%. And it's little things like that. Like mm -hmm. that in itself is one way to direct your emotion. Mm -hmm. Think about the words and the energy you feel when you use them. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not be able to direct the words that somebody else is targeting at you, but you can most certainly take a deep breath and choose the words that you're going to use in response to them mm -hmm. to not feel what is happening, right? And so if you're going to manage your emotions, part of it is understanding the energy behind the words. And if that energy is going to fuel the emotional situation, or if it's going to disengage and start to calm that situation down. And it could even be the tone at which you're talking, yeah. right? Often when we have a disagreement, 
you'll say, that's not what I meant. I don't know what you're, why did you even think that? I'm like, well, the words you chose, the tone that you used, and the way, the cadence in which you delivered it. So those three things combined, even if you're saying emotionally, internally, that's not what you were feeling, Mm -hmm. the delivery caused me to receive it in that way. And so too often we end up in disagreements or we're not aligned on uh, communication because you may have a different feeling inside, but when you're delivering it, what is coming out, your whole presentation is something different. So we have to be in direction of how we're presenting the emotions that we're feeling, right? That's huge tip number one. That communication awareness, so pivotal. Right, right. Yeah, and, and that's the toughest part because one of the toughest, I would say, uh, because it, yeah, I mean, there are times when I feel like I'm saying saying and expressing it one way and it comes off very differently. And part of that is is also difficult because whether it's you or someone else, there could be an emotional trigger based on on the context or the tone, like the tonality of the words that are coming out with where without that trigger, maybe in a typical situation, maybe it would have been fine. But mm-hmm. with that individual and whatever they experienced, it did not resonate in the same approach. So then and what so, do you do? Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's where taking a pause is really important because it's really easy to want to react and, and say and defend because then the ego is like, well, no, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> you know, and then, and how dare then how you dare take you? it that way? Yeah. And then it's it's putting, you know, putting it on the other person when you know it's the sender's responsibility. Now we're allowing yourself to recognize that not everything you're going to say is going to come out perfect. Like it's just not possible. I mean, you could say it in the most beautiful and amazing way, and someone's still going to take it. Not as intended. Out of context. Yeah, it's just it's just going to happen because of life experience. Mm-hmm. There's no way around it, um, and so it almost feels daunting in that sense. But what our opportunity could be is instead of reacting or you know placing it on the other individual, just turning, kind of taking that pause, going within. And first, maybe just acknowledging, like, hey, you know, I'm, um, I apologize. It's that it came off that way. That was definitely not as intended. You know, I'd love the opportunity to share, you know, how it flowed for me, and and maybe there's another way that I can present it. Yes. And and that's a good. It's like a shift. It's like a redirect. You know, it's uh, it's take two. Let's just say, <laughs> you know, exactly. this is a take two. Or. Another thing that I have found effective is if I see that somebody is triggered Mm -hmm. by what I've said, asking them, okay, I can see that that brought something up for you. Can you help me understand your perspective of what I just said to you? That way I can clearly understand what it is that they received from me. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm shooting in the dark. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what I did that triggered them. So just taking the time to not be triggered by their trigger, (laughs) which is often hard to do, but that's part of managing your emotions, right? Yeah. Because you don't even know yet what is going on inside the other person. Right. So if you just take the time to pause, as you said, take that breath, right? Mm -hmm. Because that breath can mean everything. Take that breath and then just seek to understand, okay, I can see... Or my observation is that that's, that's created a response in you. Can you help me understand what are you thinking or what are you feeling or what did you get from what I just said? And then that gives them an opportunity too to feel through their own emotions mm-hmm. around it, which maybe in their triggered state, they're not doing yet. Mm-hmm. But by having to take that moment to feel through and put it together in a way that they can deliver it back to you, they'll get some semblance of clarity for themselves. 
And then that brings everyone in the whole group, whether it's two people or more, everybody has to have that opportunity to manage their emotions in a way that they can convey it. Or if they don't, then they'll just unload on you. Mm -hmm. But at least you'll know where you stand. Yeah. I, I like that curiosity versus condemnation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's when we can apply curiosity, then, then it really can, it can adjust. The, the, it's, then it's not a reaction. It is a response. It's a genuine, okay. You know, if, it was, if it was intended, then not, oftentimes we're not so curious. So, yeah, exactly. You know, so if we, like, if we, I don't care how you receive yeah. this, just take it. <laughs> so if we, if we didn't intend it, then curiosity is, is a natural shift. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't intend that. So, yeah, I really want to understand, you know, what about it, you know, triggered you and, and what what can we both do moving forward so that, you know, we're not, you know, the idea isn't to like walk on eggshells. It's yeah. important to talk things through, but it's also to talk things through to a point to know where these individuals' triggers are. Now it's going to be really tough. It's not easy to do, especially if you're talking to strangers or people you're meeting at the airport or, you know, when, yeah. when people are have emotions or running high and things like that. Um, so this isn't like a blanket thing, but I do think curiosity is, is, is one that could be utilized. Uh, so is taking that pause yeah. and, and resetting and, and allowing, allowing grace on either side. Really. That's, that's such a key, such a key one. I know sometimes we'll both say like, Hey, um, did you mean it this way? Yeah. You know, that's a third one. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll say something and it'll come off differently than intended. And it's like, Hey, this is what I received. Is that what you meant? Or was it something else? Yeah. And and that, I think that goes with clarity of communication, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if we can be clear in communication and we can take that pause and mm -hmm. we can be curious mm -hmm. to me, those are the three that are very, very key. And within that, clarity of communication, regardless of the side that you're on, whether you're the center or the receiver, mm -hmm. like take the time. Is this what you intended? Is a great clarity in that communications flow, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so important. And sometimes we don't, I, I've caught myself where I didn't even realize I'm having like a feeling. So I might say something and you know, be like, oh, I didn't feel any, there, there wasn't anything behind that. And we talk about it like, oh, wow, I just uncovered things, something I didn't even know was there. And so, you know, allowing that space to not be tied to the ego and, and, or the emotion to be tied to the ego, like allow the opportunity as you're talking about through the clarity, through the pause, um, and, and just being able to, to talk through it, um, you know, there, there might, there might be something that hey, if it's coming, especially if it keeps happening, you know, that's, that's definitely a, a key aspect. Yeah. That's like an arrow going yeah. like, Hey, <laughs> I'm not going away yeah. and I'm a trigger that keeps saying hello. <laughs> so especially in close connected relationships, if something keeps coming up, having the management of our response and the direction of our emotion to not be so because, you know, sometimes if someone calls us out on our emotion, it goes back to that death of the ego thing. Mm -hmm. I am my emotion. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you call me on my emotion and you want me to change it, then you are asking my ego to take a hit, a death hit at that. So we defend it to the very end. But we are not our emotion. Mm -hmm. We are not our ego. And only by taking our emotions as input can we learn about ourselves. Right. And that would be a big, big one to recognize, right? Big number four. Mm -hmm. Our emotions are input. They inform us. They are not there to own us. They are not there to control us. They are there to give us sensory input. They are there to give us pure information about the situation we're in. And when we can see it as that, then we can pull back and ask the question, what is this showing me? If that emotion is triggering something in your stomach and you're getting like that gut clinch, mm -hmm. and then 
the overall information is like something about this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Okay. What situation are you in where your gut is clenching and the emotion around it is like the data is this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. Start exploring that and asking why don't immediately go. You did something to me that made this made me not feel right. Well, maybe that is the case. But maybe it isn't. It could be that there's something that you did that's tied to my past mm. that brought that feeling from the past forward. Yeah. And now instead of just laying all that on your lap, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for me to say, oh, I have this past feeling that this emotion has now sparked that I have an opportunity to finish feeling through and get rid of so that I don't place that on somebody else in the future. Yeah. Right. So when we can look at that and manage it more like information instead of, oh, it's your fault and start outwardly casting like daggers mm -hmm. at anyone who has created what we would perceive as a negative input or a negative emotion, then we can direct it a little bit easier. Yeah. Hey, Heart Leader community. This is Amber Mikesell, and I am so excited. Silence Your Inner Critic has a release date. We'll be hitting shelves March of 2025, and you have an opportunity to get on the wait list by clicking the link below. And when you do, you're going to immediately get a gift from me. It is the Silence Your Inner Critic Starter Kit, where you'll get 13 tips to get started on silencing your inner critic before the book hits the shelves. That's, that's so key. Um, it's easy to kind of fall in that trap of like we talked about last episode where we were kind of discussing how the external can, can define the internal. Mm -hmm. And with that as a process in which we engage in the world, we in many ways allow people to adjust how we feel internally. And so part of our opportunity in this with strength and grace is to say, hey, we can, we have the opportunity to learn how to not let someone else adjust how we feel within. Yeah. And, and now there's a, there's a fine line here. And that's something that I definitely want to kind of chat with you about in this, because we're not saying, you know, don't have emotions. No. That's not, not what this bit. is. And They're imperative. They are so imperative. Um, but... Because by by managing and navigating your own emotional structure and the way that you interact, then you have a better chance of not reacting to something. So because it's it's easy to say, oh, well, you made me feel this way. Yeah. It's like, well, no one can actually make you feel anything. Only you can have the feeling, right? Yeah. And so, and that's where again it gets a little bit dicey. Well, if, if I you know, well, then the only way to, you know, my, my first thought was, okay, well, the only way to, to, to not let someone else, it would be to not have any feelings. Right. And, and that, but that's not necessarily the case. It's just, it's how it's, it's not that I'm not feeling something. It's just how I feel it. Yes. The process in which I am feeling. And so, and to your point of the, I am like, I, I am mad versus I feel mad. You know, it's, it's not tying to the identity. It's allowing the process of the feeling to flow through and then saying, okay, because I feel that, that doesn't mean it needs to take over all of my actions. Like I don't have to embody, just because I'm feeling mad or frustrated doesn't mean I have to embody anger or frustration. Yes. That's a huge jump. So no one else can do that for me. Only I can make that choice. And so that's, that's where this fine line, I feel like, really, really fits. But then that comes with that emotional intelligence where we connect our conscious awareness of who we are to that emotion, right? And that's a, that's a big step. The knowing of who you are which we talked about in our last episode, right? You have to know unshakably who you are. Mm -hmm. And when you know unshakably who you are, 
then it becomes much easier to know you are not that emotion and how you express something that arises in you becomes a choice Mm -hmm. then. And you can choose to let it take over you, step into that driver's seat and head on off into whatever direction it wants to. Or you can choose to say, thank you very much for this information. It is useful in this moment, and I acknowledge that. But how I, knowing who I am, am going to deliver that is going to be slightly different than the way the emotion is rising up in me. Mm. And it's a very different state. It's a different level of conscious movement forward I, I would offer. Mm. I know for me in my own personal awareness of who I am as a conscious being, it was a leap forward. Mm. When I would just allow my emotions to rule my life, it was very easy to let the world happen to me, as you said mm-hmm. in a previous discussion. Like the world can happen to you, and you are a victim of everything that happens, and therefore you're fighting the wind. Mm-hmm. And every emotion is in response to that. And then it becomes that feeling that won't go away that you are a victim. Mm-hmm. You are a victim of every circumstance. Mm-hmm. Then I hit this stage where I recognized that, and it came from a practice that I had talked about before, which is I had a very wise aunt who said, you have 15 minutes to feel whatever you want to feel. Set a timer. It's great. Things happen in life, and it is messed up. So it is great to feel your way through it, but you can't change it. So at the end of that 15 minutes, you better have come up with a choice of what you're going to do next. Because after that, you can't go back. So what's your choice for going forward? And just by taking that advice, by taking her sage wisdom, and it was my Aunt Judy, by the way, and saying, okay, I'm going to implement this. She's right. I can't do anything about what has happened. So let me feel all my feels at once. Let me do what I need to do to process this. But let me time box that Mm -hmm. and really allow myself to get through it, not around it, not suppress it, but let me get through what I need to get through and have an outcome at the end. What am I going to do about it? And by feeling all those emotions, then I was able to really take those packets of information and make a clear choice Mm. and move forward from there and feel like I'd processed it. And the more I practiced that and the more I practiced that, the more that time dropped Mm. and the more that time dropped and the more that time dropped until it almost became like an innate thing that happened where an emotion would arise and I would be able to quickly process it and go, okay, well, I I can't change what just happened, but I can choose how I'm going to move forward from this. And so my choice is this Mm -hmm. and I could pivot and I could very quickly navigate the twists and the turns that life was throwing at me without allowing my emotions to become my story. That's so well put. I mean, to me, that's that's mastery. Uh, when we talk about mastering something like navigating and managing emotions, it's not. It's easy to think, oh, well, they just then you just are so good that you just don't have any emotions. And to someone who's not trained, what you're talking about could almost seem like that when you see it real time. But the reality is, it's just it's it's going from where I know I've been, where I had to let emotion, uh, you know, take over me for months, months. And I would be almost debilitated by that emotion. And it would direct all of my actions. And I felt weak. I felt vulnerable. I felt, you know, the opposite of what I was seeking. 
and you're right when when we do have that practice and we are able to recognize this mastery as a process it's just less time and less time and less time then we can start to create goals for ourselves instead of okay when something happens maybe not not allowing it to be two multiple months maybe say okay now i'm going to let it be you know uh, two weeks and now i'm going to let it be a week now just a couple days now just a day now a couple hours now within an hour you know, in 30 minutes, down to 15 minutes, down to five, whatever, however you feel you can flow through and just keep getting better and better and better at it. You know, that's, that's to me is a process of mastery because again, mastery is not a, a result. It is a, it is a constant practice. It is a, a level in which we are able to execute a process. Yes. And what was that tip number six? Oh my God. Yeah. We're losing count. (laughs) There are just so many tools. That's the beauty of this, right? We can offer tips and tools, but I bet if each individual who's listening to this really felt through it, they probably have something in their arsenal already that can help them kind of understand how to separate out that allowing the world to come at them Mm -hmm. and invoke the emotion and then have that emotion control them versus allowing life to be life, Mm -hmm. which it will always be, right? That's how we learn. Things happen. There's a stimulus. There's a response. That's just what happens. But how we choose to respond is the direction that takes us in whatever path we choose to go down, right? And so it doesn't mean that the stimulus didn't create multiple responses within us. Like I could be equally mad Mm -hmm. and sad and also see the joy and the beauty in something. Yeah. I can have, that's the dichotomy and the beauty of being human. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Don't even know how it happens. But all those emotions can happen all at once inside of me. And then I go, all right, but do I, do I honor all of those? Or which ones do I choose? Mm. And what do I want my experience of the next step of this to be? It just it reminds me of that uh, scene in Harry Potter when Hermione is going through all the emotions, and Ron is just like, "Oh my gosh, you know, how could someone feel so many emotions?" And she just goes, "Well, not everyone has the emotional range of a teaspoon, you know." And it's, <laughs> and it's just a, it's a, it's a great fit. And he's just like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't know one person could feel so many things." And in many ways, it's because uh, you know, in, in society, there there are so many different aspects in which we are are grown up and, and expected in terms of how to show our emotions. Um, and so, I think it is it's it's important that when when we are learning in this process of mastery and and, and narrowing the time, I, I think you're bringing up such an excellent point of of choosing. Uh, allowing ourselves to feel all of them, but which one do we want to choose to um, to activate in our reality? I don't know a better word than that right now. Yeah. Um, and so maybe if you are feeling all those things and in one or you know maybe multiple of them might might fit, maybe it doesn't have to be all of them. Maybe you could say, okay, well, I'm angry at first, but the reality is is like there's nothing I can change and and you know maybe it's actually, Maybe there's actually some positivity in here. And so by not getting so stuck in the anger, uh, I'm, not, I'm blocking the positive movement. And so by allowing myself to process the anger in a, in a quicker way allows me to activate the positivity and then change my life in a, in a, in a way that's actually really supportive and get myself to the next level. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing. Yes. Because being stuck in anger, in frustration, in sadness. Even saying that doesn't feel motivating. Mm-mm. Woohoo, I'm sad. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it doesn't go together. <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> like, it doesn't fit. Right? <laughs> so we have to be able to direct that, to manage it and say, okay, I accept that I'm sad. I can't fake that. Mm-hmm. 
I can't fake not being sad. But I can focus on what brings me joy, even when I'm experiencing sadness. That's a way to manage our emotional state. I honor the sadness that I feel. Simultaneously, I know what brings me joy. So while I'm honoring the sadness for the duration that it needs, I can also honor the joy and the things that bring me joy in my life so that I'm not just sitting and stewing in the sadness. Because if I sit and I stew in the sadness, what ends up happening? I end up getting sucked deeper and deeper and deeper into sadness until I hit despair. Until I hit something lower than despair, maybe it becomes self-loathing. And I just keep sinking and sinking, sinking further into the pot, right? You're in the stew, so you're going to just drown. But if you can hold on to the higher feelings that make you feel lighter, the ones that give you that airier feeling, the joy, the things that bring you joy, the things that invoke the emotion of happiness, even if it's just fleeting for a moment, it's like having that, that little bit that can help pull you out a little more and a little more and a little more until you've managed the emotion enough that you're pulled out of the sadness and the other becomes your more consistent way of feeling. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying pretend that the other isn't happening or suppress it. As you pointed out, we can have many emotions simultaneously. So allow yourself, even if you're in that, to say, but I can choose joy at the same time. So let me find something, even if it's 10 minutes of joy, something that makes me happy. Watch kitten videos. I mean, they are so freaking cute. <laughs> or I have on my Instagram feed, I have so many animal videos. Like my whole Instagram at this point is curated with cute little animal videos because it helps me stay in that joy state. Nice. If there's anything going on, all I need to do is Look at a bunny hugging a raccoon. You know, yeah. it's like there's so many things out there yeah. and it just brings you there. I love that. You know, so often we talk about emotional triggers as a negative and I feel like there's a way to create emotional triggers in a positive way. Yeah. And I think what you just said can, can create that. And so it's, um, we can, as you say, flip the script on that and, and I did this a lot in golf because it was, you feel like I wrote oh, so many emotions on the golf course, especially when it comes to tournaments and all these kind of things. That's why and you need to duck yeah. <laughs> if you see a golf club coming your way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, it just, it feels like, you know, a, a whole, like a whole lifetime condensed in like four hours, right? Yeah. And you have all these ups and downs and, you know, there's all these different things going on. And, and uh, you know, it took me a while to realize that it doesn't have to be that way. And I started creating these emotional triggers that were very positive. Um, even if it was simple, just like uh, having a rubber band on my hand and snapping it and getting myself back, like re resetting. Um, recalibration. Recalibration, right? Cognitive recalibration. <laughs> Cognitive recalibration, <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. And just like um, um, Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yes. Um, I love you. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you're my favorite. Um, yeah, so it's just with, with golf, yeah, you're just all over the place with these emotions. So creating these emotional triggers, like not just on the golf course, but in life just to to reset, you know, even if it's having a, like I have a picture of my beautiful love uh, on my phone. And if I'm ever feeling anything other than like the greatest sense of happiness, you know, I, I look down at my phone. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, there's, I just, there's my love and it just makes me feel so happy. And, and so it just kind of resets in that motion. And so we can, we can flip the script. Not everything has to be a negative trigger. It can be a positive trigger. And so if we can uh, curate, if we're, if we're willing to curate our social media, we should be willing to curate our life. Yes, exactly. And Again, going back to talking about there are going to be twists and turns, right? Yeah. No matter how much we curate things, no matter how much we set things mm -hmm. to bring us the most joy, 
and positive inputs. Life will throw us a curveball just to say, can you handle this? (laughs) But are you ready for this? We still have that mighty power of choice in every moment. And I have found most people undervalue this super skill and give it away way too quickly and easily. The power of choice is what takes us to the next moment every time. Mm -hmm. Even if your choice is to do nothing in this moment, it's still your choice. Mm -hmm. If your choice is to allow the emotion to rule you, it's still your choice. Mm -hmm. You may say, I'm not choosing it, but by not choosing it, you're making a choice. Mm -hmm. Choice is something that we all do every millisecond of every moment of every day, whether we're consciously aware of it or we are not. Mm -hmm. Emotions are one of a multitude of inputs that help us make informed choices. Mm -hmm. And the more that we become aware as conscious beings that we have these choices and all of the things that are giving us the input to make these choices, then we become those creators of our own life journey. As you always talk about being a creator being, you know, my way of looking at it is I'm the author of my own life story, right? Creator being author of your life journey, however you want to look at it, you really take on the responsibility of penning or writing or creating the next moment of your life. And how epic is that? Mm. Like, how epic can we get? Yeah. To me, that's thrilling and exciting. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's what is, what could be more thrilling and exciting than experiencing the our greatest potential i mean do we want to i mean how often are we like if we're sitting on our deathbed and we're like you know what a lot of it is is a lot of people talk about regret right oh i didn't do this or i didn't you know i didn't experience this and all that and you know and that's it's sad but we have that opportunity that we could express and say okay well do i you know i'm alive right now so what what choices can i can I make today to help me be the greatest version of the grandest vision of who I can be so that by the time I am ready to transition, I can look back, not from regret, but from empowerment yes, and happy happiness and and fulfillment. Owning that fact, like not everyone is going to be able to do everything that they desire, right? There are things that our boundaries in some areas. I know I experienced some of those in my life where financially I couldn't travel to Europe and backpack through all of the different places that I wanted to at the time in my life where that would have been something I could do. Mm -hmm. But did that mean I couldn't have an experience that was similar to that so that I would know what it's like? Mm -hmm. Like, did it have to be Europe? Could I throw on a backpack and go backpacking through the Carolinas Mm -hmm. and still have a similar experience that would feed my soul? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I could. And so I did something that brought my soul a similar experience because what was the truth of that experience? What was it that I wanted? And I know this is going a little bit off course, but I think it's important because we do hold to that so clearly. We're like, I have this one goal and that's my goal. And if I don't do that, then it's no other way. But if we look at the true purpose of that, that goal, right? It's the experience that we have getting there. Mm -hmm. That's really the value. So start kind of weaving yourself backward and going, all right, so why did I set this goal? I desired to learn about myself along the journey of where I went. Mm -hmm. Well, then does it actually have to be in that location? And why do I need a backpack? 
Like, what's the purpose of backpacking? Could it be a car ride with a little bit of hiking in other places? Maybe my whole point of backpacking was to be in communion with nature. Mm -hmm. So we start to really break it down. Maybe that goal isn't really the end of where we want to be. Maybe it's each one of these steps that's where we want to be. And the emotion that we tie around that, the twists of feeling limited because we can't do that, we can start to unravel and go, but I can. I can achieve all these many steps that would have gotten me there by shifting it a little bit and still have something that's equally as amazing. I love that. Does that that. make sense? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's... uh, I know you said we're kind of going off topic, but I honestly feel like what you just provided was a very practical example of how to actually move through and navigate emotions. Uh, and, and that, like going through things in that manner, because it's easy to just say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm frustrated and, and mad because I'm regretting not doing this or X, Y, and Z. And then we can let those emotions control us and take over and you know stew in that, as you were talking about, regret. right? Yeah. But what you just provided was a very practical application on how to move through an emotion, maybe something in the past, or maybe to help you understand something in the, that's in the future and, or presently. Um, but it can really help you uh, navigate the time spent in that emotion and reframing it in a way that is beneficial. And so I, I feel like it was actually really, really on point in a beautiful way. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah it, the more we can pull ourselves out of the attachment mm-hmm. to it must be one way yeah. and embrace that there are so many beautiful ways to achieve anything, mm-hmm. anything, but first, we have to really understand what is the thing, yeah. right? And holding on to an ideology of a thing is very different than understanding the purpose of the thing. Yeah. And so that's another thing to separate, right? Like, what is the true purpose, the true intent versus the idealized outcome? And that does even relate to emotions, right? Love is going to look this way, and it will only look this way. And fairy tales have told me that it looks this way. So until it looks this way, it is not love. Mm. Well, I hate to break it to the world, but love comes in so many different shades and so many different approaches. and. It is infinite, right? Mm -hmm. It is the most infinite, multifaceted expression of anything that I personally have ever experienced. Mm -hmm. So fairy tales aside, to box love in because I have some envisioned outcome of what it should look like, Mm -hmm. I am doing myself a disservice. Now, what is the purpose of love? Mm. What do I desire for love to be in my life? What is the expression and what is the experience? Now, that's completely different. What's its purpose in my life? That I can begin to wrap my my entire self around. Mm. Like the purpose of love is for me to grow deeper in my own understanding of self Mm -hmm. and to connect deeply with another through their understanding of themselves and how we connect and where we differ. Mm -hmm. Right. So that doesn't set these parameters of, well, if you don't bring me flowers all the time, then we're not really in love. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to be on the list. (laughs) Is it nice if you bring me flowers? It's a beautiful thing. It's a great expression. But as long as we're continuing to go deeper into knowing of self and then share that expression with one another, I don't know that it gets more beautiful than that. Mm. 
I agree, my love. I think that's a a beautiful final tip. Not allowing yourself to get into emotional traps by asking what is the purpose. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. It is so easy to get caught in emotional traps during the twists and turns that life brings us, but we truly feel that these tips can assist. And if you have some tips that you have found that have been very beneficial for you, please don't hesitate to share them right here on the site that you are on, wherever that may be. We love sharing with the community so that we can all grow together. And if you haven't had an opportunity to do so yet, please do us a favor and hit like and subscribe. It helps us more than we can possibly say. Until next time.